When land meets water, amazing things happen. Wetlands store prolific amounts of carbon. They, they reduce the flood risk. They treat water. And they're also fantastic for our health and well-being. But we're experiencing natural capital depletion. Natural capital, it's everything in nature that, that benefits people. So it can be the soil, the water, the trees, animals. We've lost 90% of our wetlands in the UK. So all this incredible habitat that's, that's always been doing this work has been taken away from us. And that's why we've got to do something. We've got to invest to restore and the natural capital. Hi, I'm Pete. I'm the Head of Philanthropy at the Wild Island Wetland Trust. Steart Marshes this is a, a 400 hectare site. It's uh, one of the UK's largest coastal managed realignment projects. Since its creation eight years ago, there's been an explosion of, of biodiversity. The biodiversity of this site has been improving year on year. My name is Alice Laver and I'm the site manager at Steart Marshes. We've seen vast amounts of carbon stored in Steart. The carbon stored in four years, it was equivalent to one million trees across 10 years. We know that wetlands store more carbon than any other habitat in the whole world. The carbon storage on wetlands starts from day one of creation. As soon as you let the tide in, or as soon as you let that water in, you're starting that process. The steer marshes capture carbon in a couple of ways. First and foremost, when the tide comes in, it brings in mud and silt. That in itself has carbon. That silt will settle and it buries salt marsh plants, and those plants also have carbon. You multiply that across the world, it's, it's massive. It shows the potential that these habitats have of addressing the climate crisis. A recent study by FTEC looked at the investment required over the next 10 years for, for the UK to achieve its nature targets, and it identified in excess of a 50 billion pound shortfall. We know that the government and philanthropic sources alone are not going to fill this gap. But what's really exciting is the private sector can in a range of different ways. So say a housing developer will get a greater return on the sale of a property if it overlooks green or blue space. You could think in terms of nature-based solutions for something like the water sector. Treatment wetlands can improve the quality of water in a natural way. You could also think in terms of the investment to offset carbon emissions, meeting the demands of the private sector in achieving their net zero ambitions. Business leaders have been brilliant in responding to our call for a blue recovery. The real challenge for us is to turn that interest and that curiosity into a plan of action that really delivers and delivers quickly. So WWT launched our Blue Recovery proposals in 2020. And at the heart of that was for the restoration and creation of 100,000 hectares of wetlands in the UK. The starting point for the Blue Recovery Leaders Group was how do we overcome this disconnect between the value of wetlands, the proven value of wetlands, and the rate at which they are being created. The companies that are taking a lead in this space are doing extremely well. As we go forward, it's going to become the, the expectation of companies and the risk of not acting now is being left behind and, and losing stakeholders, whether that's uh, customers or, or shareholders, as a result of that. We believe there's hope for the future. We will be building wetland treatment systems. We'll be building a flood defence scheme. We'll be building a mental health prescription and we'll be building livelihoods for people as well. We know that marshes protect businesses and homes against flooding. There's also the agricultural side of things, so they're productive. So we've got salt marsh, lamb and beef being produced. In the local community have got access to a huge network of paths, which they can enjoy on their bikes, 
uh, walking, running on their horses, and a lot of them use it to now get to school, which is really lovely. We're wanting a new generation of people who are blue engineers and green engineers who benefit from the value of our wetlands. They're building the skills, they're building the knowledge, and they're out there creating new wetlands for us. I think it really is breaking new ground. It feels like we are really looking at pioneering some quite new and innovative approaches. And the more we can get that message out, and the more we can demonstrate its effectiveness, the more we can start to see these solutions scale up.